I'm only two and a half years in this thing. I want to be a household name. I'm going to right. be a household name. I'm being, regardless of what I've done, I, I'm always compared to A, B, C, and D. I want, I'm my own person. I'm my own person. And it's just wild that every time I do something, somebody brings up, oh, is she this and this and that and that? And I'm like, why do I have to be compared to anybody? Why? Why? And these people have done this and have honed their skills for years. And here I am out here just swimming and doing it. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Bonjour, you're watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. And we have an amazing show and, of course, nothing but amazing guests. And today is no exception. She is a mom, a wife, and the current undefeated AEW TBS champion for over 500 plus days. Please welcome Jade Cargill. Woo, how you doing? Thank you for having I me. Thank you for coming on. Let, let like I, this is a long time coming. You know, women's wrestling talk. We support all women doing amazing things. But you, you've been doing. You just stepped on, and you just you're like I'm here. Um, so let's get into it. I mean, I've seen the interviews, and it's like you didn't necessarily need to do this, but it's a lot of pressure. Like I've seen the tweets, I've seen the articles, all the things. So how do you handle that pressure where they just strapped it on you? You're like every day, like you're you're growing. Like, how do you handle that pressure? Um, you know what? Being that I, I came from psychology, I'm able to just master my thought process and sit down and and decipher what I want to uh, take in and what I don't. And you know, I just know that God would never give me anything I couldn't handle. And I know um, from experience and seeing my spouse um, play sports. You know, he's actually very hated. It was very hated in uh, baseball at one point. And, you know, I, I seen him just embrace it and just be the villain and, and go out there and not care what people think. And all I have to do, honestly, is just put my phone down. And I'm in a whole nother world. And I'm grateful to have someone who's not in wrestling. So, like, my world isn't so much, like, deep into wrestling i can just literally put my phone down and people's opinions go poof and i can right. care less because as long as my owner is is happy as long as some people are safe that's all i care about like i'm out here i'm working my butt off and i'm not gonna let anybody tell me who i am and what i can do and that leads me to the next question we were talking offline about as far as having parents from the islands and being a first generation I'm from Canada, but first generation North American. And I felt for me, like I felt that pressure because it's like they they experienced yes. something totally different there. And now you're here. You, yes. You've been left with this opportunity. So did you feel that growing up? And then, you know, in addition now with wrestling? You know, my my grandmother, um, you know, she just pushed me to uh, know that I can do whatever I, I want in this life. Did I feel the pressure? Yes, because they're like, you better figure it out and you better figure it out fast. Um, <laughs> so I grew up relatively quick. I went to a boarding school in a whole nother uh, city. Oh, wow. And I was there myself. And, um, you know, and I grew up really quick in that way because I couldn't call to my mom all the time. And, and you know, I had to figure things out myself. And uh, me being in sports in general taught me a lot of maturity and being able to deal with things on my own. Um, but I did feel it. I mean, uh, my family, they still don't understand wrestling, uh, really. So, but they're very proud of me. Um, they know I'm out here busting my butt day in, day out, um, coming back with all kind of pains and, and, and marks on my body. Um, so they're very appreciative to that. But they're still learning. They're learning just as much as I am. I mean, my brother we're really a big soccer family. My father loves soccer. Mm -hmm. My mom likes football and aspects, but we're really a big soccer and track family. And uh, then it's like, okay, let's all discover. My brother's a big wrestling fan and we loved wrestling uh, growing up until I got really deep into sports. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot, but you know, we're growing together and they see, I love it. And that's all that matters to them. I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, same thing. My parents, like, they can't explain. It's like, she does something in TV. Like, they're, they're just, as long as I'm happy, they're happy. Yeah, they, so. they, exactly. My, my mom, she was really just excited about the red carpet. I just did more than anything. She was like, oh, my gosh, you look so beautiful. I'm like, mom, like, 
So <laughs> she's like, okay, you know. So if anything, my mom didn't want me to get in wrestling because she's like, you're going to get injured. You're going to injure yourself. And I don't want you to injure yourself. Why are you going to injure yourself? You're too pretty to do that. Why do you want to do that? And I'm like, because I want to do it. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. I love it. So that was a battle in itself. But, you know, they came around and they see that I'm very passionate about it and I'm in it. And so they, they're going to support anything that I'm in and that I'm passionate about. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving my family for this, like, I leave home to do this job. So they're going to, you know, um, they're going to love something that I'm loving as well, especially if I'm sacrificing time with my family for. I like it. So in the moments where you need a break, what's the go-to West Indian food? Because I know I know you eat healthy. So we'll, you know, yes. we'll, we'll, we'll go to West Indian food where it's like, I just I just need a moment. I need to reminisce. What, what's that food? I keep fish or uh, I could say oxtails. I love oxtails, but I like I like oxtails. Like, I love some oxtails. I love, and I can cook some oxtails, but I love oxtails. And um, my grandfather, uh, before he passed away, he, I know dumplings are like, it's just dough, but like, it's a way that he would cook it that mm -hmm. I could not find anywhere in the States. And I have yet to find it in the States. I only get it when I go home and I'm like around my family over in Jamaica. So uh, those two things, three things are like my go-to. Yeah, I definitely agree. The dumplings in Guyana, we call it um, bake. Like my my grandma's passed away. Like can't they don't can't that find that anywhere. So I I I, I agree. Yeah. I concur with that. Uh, so let's hit these 500, 500 plus days, right? I mean, yeah. I I know yeah. the goal is well. What is the goal? What is your goal? Are you like because I I saw the interview. You're like whenever I'm ready, I'll when I'm ready to drop it, I'll drop it. So is there a number yeah. in your mind where you're like, all right, I've, I've done my piece? I think I'm ready now. I think I'm, I'm more than ready. Um, I mean, which is wild. I just said in um, my last podcast interview, I've only wrestled five veterans. I've only wrestled five veterans. You know, um, I'm here to grow. I'm here to get better. I'm here to dominate. And, you know, I think what I've done is phenomenal. But I need to take down those top women, you know, like I'm it's, it's no mercy around here. So um, I think I'm ready now. I mean, who's to say I, I'm not ready? Like I'm on live TV and I've done nothing but just take on challenges and take on challenges regardless of how much preparation I have or, or not. And I've done that, you know, and I've worked with Taya. I've worked with Athena. I've worked with. Uh, Tanara, I've worked with uh, Nyla Rose. I've I've worked with great women who can go in the ring, and what? Who's to say that those these women I've just named are are any less than the women that we have at the top? Because Athena is phenomenal. Yeah. So, so is um, Madison. So is um, Tyus. These people are great. I know I can do it. Just give me the ball and let me run. Okay. Okay. So that leads us to our pay per view coming up. Uh, yes. Round two with Taya. So I have to also be, you know, Taya's also Canadian. So, you know, I, I'm oh, torn. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I'm oh. torn. And okay. Taya, Taya's a friend of the show. So, you know, okay. I'm torn. Okay. But what is your, what's, what's your game plan in retaining the belt? Just be myself. I know I got this in the back. I'm not worried. I already beat her once. Regardless, I'm going to end up on top like I always do I guess I have to make this seem like a challenge and I'm okay with that like I don't know how she even worked wiggled her way back up here again but here we are because everybody is so scared I asked your favorites to come down and and I welcome challenges but Taya seems to be the only person who is not afraid to get her butt whooped again or just step up to the challenge so here I am welcoming another win um because nobody else wanted to step up for this pay-per-view battle. And that's all right. It's it's all right. I'm going to give her some time, I guess. I guess. I like playing with my food here and there. I'm going to give her I'm gonna give her a little something. Since you like her so much, I guess I'll give her a little grace. I'll give it to you. I'll tell her you're the reason why I'm giving her a little grace this time around, I guess. <laughs> well, then I appreciate it. No <laughs> but problem. that goes to the outfits. Yes. You got the, you have the, like, I can't even name all the outfits. Every outfit is just like stunning. We also have a show called Turnbuckle, Turnbuckle Glam, which you're like constantly on. 
How do you come up with the ideas for these outfits? Um, I love cosplay. Um, again, like my entire character is is form. Like I love form. I think she's a strong African woman, and I feel like I represent those same antics. Like I'm strong. I I um I control. To me, I feel like when when it comes to the rain. I control the crowd. Like that's that's my weather. That's that's me being storm right there. Um, I'm strong. I'm fearless. Um, I get a little too cocky sometimes, and my head blows up at times because I let this side just take over at times. But who doesn't like to be cocky and, and confident? And I'm that person. Um, but the next, co- I mean, not cosplay, but the next uh, gear that you're about to see is something very personal to me and to the black community. I'm really okay. excited um, for Sunday and for everybody to see and what I go out there and do because it's very personal. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about this one more than any of them. Um, I'm not doing cosplay this time. So okay. let's see. But the next cosplay is going to be okay. a banger. I'm really excited. The DC Universe is going to be really excited. But I passed it up this time for a lot of reasons. So let's see. I mean, you don't miss on 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 the outfits. So Thank whatever, you. every outfit is, is good. Um, but what about these conversations that uh, you have with? And I have a problem with Tony Khan because they call him TK, and every time I see it on the timeline, I'm like, I'm I, I was here first, but you know. <laughs> um, but what's your conversation like with him? Like, what what was the conversation like with him as far as you know you becoming the TBS champ? Because like, to put that on somebody is like an honor and also belief. So what was that original conversation like? And then what's the conversation like now? Um, So let's just start from the beginning. Um, Tony was one of the reasons why I chose this company. You know, we had a long conversation. I told him what I wanted and how hard I work. And, you know, I believed in his vision and he's so hungry. And I'm used to being the underdog. You like underdogs show a good fight. Mm -hmm. And I love that. he just loves wrestling. Like the man loves wrestling. I don't know how he does it. He gets literally no sleep. Um, if he's not, he's never, he's never missed a show, you know, like he has other things going on, but he has never missed one of our shows. Um, and he sits down and he has, if he can't make time, like he'll try his best to make time for everybody. Um, and he's torn a million and one ways, you know, mm-hmm. um, um, when we, I didn't, I didn't know. To be honest, I didn't know. All we talked about was a vision I had for myself. You know, I'm only two and a half years in this thing. I want to be a household name. I'm going to right. be a household name. I'm being, regardless of what I've done, I, I'm always compared to A, B, C, and D. I want, I'm my own person. I'm my own person. And it's just wild that every time I do something, somebody brings up, oh, well, she this and this and that and that. And I'm like, why do I have to be compared to anybody? Why? Why? And these people have done this and have honed their skills for years. And here I am out here just swimming and doing it. So Tony just believed in me. And I appreciate that of him. Because if you talk to anybody, else, they'll be like, what the hell is this man doing? But he believed in me. He saw a vision in me. And at the end of the day, regardless if people don't like it or not, nobody looks like me. And I don't say that. And uh, I don't I don't say that to be like overly boastful, but it's true. And it's nothing wrong with me feeling like that. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, I know I go out there. He know this man would have never if he didn't see how hard I worked and how hard I wanted it. He would have never done that. He would have never done that at all. And I'm very grateful. I didn't know. I mean, I knew I, I, I didn't know I had thoughts of it. But I didn't know, you know, and and now this is my baby, and this is this is where I'm starting. Like I'm starting right here, and that's wild with my experience. So mm-hmm. more than anything, I'm just thankful that he saw something in me, and our conversation to this day is great. Like he is the most down to earth man. Again, I can it's why I'll call him at two o'clock, and let's just say he's not up. He'll probably call me in the next hour because he's or next thirty minutes because he's I don't know in England or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, easy to talk to, just passionate, um, and just, just for not like just Tony Khan. I don't know how else to describe him. I mean, he's just, he's, he's a great boss. Like he's easy to talk to. He's stern when he needs to be stern. Um, but I mean, he's a boss and I'm very thankful to work under him. I like it. Now, uh, 
going a little bit away from wrestling, I was, you know, looking through your social media. Uh, you like walking around the historic, historical cemeteries. Um, yes. Please, please <laughs> just... I mean, I saw you went to one in Canada. Mount, and yes. it's so funny because I've beautiful, heard of that Beautiful, beautiful cemetery. By the way, beautiful people. And, 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 and I don't think this is different at all. People were having picnics in the cemetery. There were kids going to the playground because there was a playground in the cemetery that was connected to the school. So they had to walk through the cemetery. People were on their bikes, walking their dogs, having lunch. It was beautiful. It was, I, I think that was one of the cleanest cemeteries I've ever been to. I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know. That was one of the, the, I don't, I love, I love cemeteries. I don't know. I don't know. I just, they're peaceful. Like I understand why they're peaceful, but it's peaceful. I love historical cemeteries. There's so much to like take in. And it's like, just for people to like, when the, the tombstones they choose is pretty interesting to me and mm -hmm. why they choose this tombstone. Um, I've seen some, like the one in Canada was this fireman and it was like himself and it, it was clearly, it was very expensive, uh, tombstone. It was so beautiful. Um, so beautiful. Um, and it was a big, uh, tribute piece for that cemetery, but I, I, I don't know. I just love cemeteries and the creepier they are, to be honest, the better, um, that sounds so weird, but like, I just, I love it. I've always, I've always, I'm a very morbid person. So like, I, I just thought, I don't know. I want to start sharing it. And now that I've met other people who like show me like, Hey, when you go to UK, look at this, when you go to this place, look at this. And, and I love it. Cause I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. And I really go, I have so many, I have not yet uploaded yet. And I'm trying to, cause reels take so dang long and I don't know mm -hmm. how to really do it yet, but I have like, I've visited so many different cemeteries since the last one and I just have to find the time to post them. That's correct. Yeah. Cause Mount Pleasant, like Beautiful. I know exactly where that is. Never went into the cemetery ever. And I was, looking, I, was looking, I was looking at the real, I was like, that actually looks pretty like, like peaceful, but I've never thought. <laughs> never, it, never it, thought it, but the one, honestly, the one uh, Mount Pleasant, like I said, people were like, there's benches there. It's, it's like, it's it's my like again kids had to walk through the entrance of the cemetery to get to the playground in the back of their school and i i've even been to a cemetery where like kids are like playing in a cemetery i think it was in philadelphia kids were playing in a cemetery having a good time not knowing maybe that we're in a cemetery right now but I've seen a playground in a cemetery before. Uh, people, like I said, people were walking their dogs in a cemetery, um, running around in the cemetery. I've, I've been to a cemetery at night before, and I've seen couples walking through, uh, several couples walking through, holding hands. I know it's, I'm telling you, you at least go to one. Go to that one. Go to Mount Pleasant. Yeah, I'll check that like it. It's, it was the, the, day. the cleanest cemetery I've ever <laughs> been to. Just the the tombstones are everywhere. You just like, mm -hmm. you have to watch your step. And that was different for me, but um, it was very beautiful and very clean. And I was, I was too, it's another one. That's the older one too there. And I was trying to figure out which one. So next time we go back to Canada, I'm gonna go back, well, Toronto, I'm gonna go to the other one, but okay. beautiful cemetery. The trees were beautiful. It was autumn. So they were changing colors. I'm very passionate about it, but I can see. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I love I love looking at cemeteries and just um, it's historical cemeteries. And again, the creepier they are, the older they are, um, the more like I'm like, yes, I'm going to go. Let's go. Okay. Well, you know what? <laughs> like, um, all right. All right. I might check that one out during the day, but this you is. No, like... do it. Yeah. Go throughout the day. Yeah. yeah. Just at for night. your first time. It's so it was so many people at that one particularly. And you can drive your car through that. Yeah. It's so big. You got to drive your car through it. If you like don't want to walk and you're like eerie, drive your car through there, yeah. park, look around, get back in. Yeah, I'm kind of, <laughs> kind of a punk. Um, but going to, so you have no skin in this match. I want to see who you're going to bet on this match. So we have Jamie Hayter or Tony Storm for the AEW Women's World Championship. Who do you have? Jamie Hayter, hard hitter. Hard working woman. I, she she's she puts on bangers and she's a hard hitter. So I think she might just take Tony Storm's head off. Okay, okay. And I mean, you've lived you've lived a life. 
I mean, this is like the next chapter as far as like what you're doing. Um, you did mention that you want to be like the next version of The Rock, but let's say like you want to, not the next version of The Rock, but something similar as far as what he's doing. Yes. Um, do you have like a game plan as far as like, have you already started setting stuff in, you know, in, in the work? For that, for that yeah, I, I've been taking acting classes over a year, but I've been right now I'm embarking on a little bit of comedy um, because that's rare. It's rare. Most um, wrestlers, they get into action because we already think about it. You know, it's just a no brainer. So right. I'm trying something different and just like trying to round everything out and uh, step out the box a little because I always have, if you've noticed, I'm always a serious person, but I'm really like a super funny person. So I was like, all right, let me like get uncomfortable a little bit because comedians, if you've noticed, they're phenomenal actors. They're yes. phenomenal actors. Like they just go out there and they like make a joke and they're like in their character. They're like, all right, let me yeah. loosen up a little bit, make a joke. Here we go. And um, so I'm, I'm getting into that right now. Um, I have several steps to um, get into that version of myself as far as my what I'm going to do um, during wrestling, after wrestling. Um, but right now, my main focus is to to kill what I'm doing right now. And this is my floor. I'm, I, I really want to be phenomenal at wrestling before I give anything else my, my entire focus. Um, I can do both. Again, I'm a mother. I did child psychology. Like, I do so much. I, I, I own a professional softball team in Austin, Texas. Texas, check me out. Check us out. June 15th, um, Austin, Texas. Oh, sorry. June 25th, Austin, Texas. Uh, check us out, guys. Um, four team owners, believe it or not, professional. Check us out. Um, you know, I'm doing a lot. I wear a lot of hats. But um, so I really want to be phenomenal in this before I really, like, go off into something else. I didn't just enter this to, like, do it for right now because it's fun. Like, I really want to be, when I got into it, I wasn't, when I, my tryout, I was not that great. I was like, whoa, this is different. So I really want to be great at it. And I'm going to be great at it. And with the more experience and more reps I'm going to get, I'm going to get nothing but better. So I'm excited for the future. I am too. And I just want to throw this out there. Uh, I saw Fast and Fast, Fast 10, Fast X. And I feel like you know, I'm just putting it out because sometimes, you know, when I do stuff like this, people steal the idea. So I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> I can definitely see you in because I think there's going to be like 10 more. So I can definitely see you in one of those in one of those 10. So I'm just, you know, I'm hoping that for you. And when it happens, you know, I don't I don't need nothing. I'm just you know putting it out in the universe for you. I can definitely see you in it. Um, Me too, I'm really excited. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like either the villain or like you helping the family, like one of those. Like, I feel like you can go either way. I can easily play the villain, but I can easily be the good guy. So, I mean, the yeah. villain just comes natural. That's just, that's easy work for me. I just yeah. look, everybody thinks, when they look at me anyway, they think I'm a villain. They I open my mouth and like, oh, I'm like, yeah, I know. It's okay. <laughs> and now, uh, last question, the locker room. What's the locker room like? You know, everybody's in, everybody's in there. Um, I've heard as far as different locker rooms, some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. What's the female locker room like at AEW? Our locker room, I have, I think it's really calm. Everybody's so busy these days and everybody has their own stuff going on and everybody's trying to be successful in their own way. Honestly, I don't see a lot of people that stay in the locker room like that. Um, and I personally don't stay in the locker room for the most part because I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing or if I got this. I don't have something to change. So if anything, I, I I really just hang out with Ricky Starks and like we just go off on our own little island and and just you know try to be great and then discuss ideas and and things of that sort. Um, but the locker room's very like chill. But as, as far as I know, it's very chill. I go in, I say, hey ladies, let's let's go, let's go kill it, let's F LFG and and uh. You know, because I want us all to be great. I want us all to be successful because we are still a new company and um, we have mm -hmm. to put on like we got one match a show. Like, come on. Next thing is let's, let's, let's get two. like let's let's start something like new. Let's let's like revive this. Let's do something. So um, for the most part, everybody's so busy in their own ways and being pulled to pull different ways. And there's di different storylines. 
and they're trying to figure out their own stuff because Tony's so busy and everybody's so busy. Mm -hmm. So um, it's calm for the most part. Okay. And last question, promise. What is one piece of advice that somebody has given you that you, as far as wrestling that you kind of take with you that that was just kind of instrumental in your career? Um, well, Brian always, uh, Wayne, he will always say like phenomenal things to me. And I remember one time um, I was working with him and uh, <laughs> we were talking about something. I think it was like like my role and like doing moves and stuff. And he was like, no, like you're a star, you're a superstar. Like you're, you're in a different like realm and you have to like, you, you know that, but you know that like, so you have to do something a certain way. And he was just telling me like, just, just calm down. Like don't, cause I, I like I said, I go to the back and I, I'm, I, I want to be great. So I'm like, let's watch film now. Let's do this now. Like let's, let's like, Let's, I want to get this all out right now. Like, I feel iffy. Like, let's talk about it. And he's just like, take your time. Like, you are on a fast track right now. Like, take your time. I know the internet might say this and it might say that. But, like, you know, it, it takes several years to, like, get into this and be comfortable. And, like, even if you are out here, like, sinking, swimming, whatever. Like, you can't tell. You can't tell. Mm -hmm. Like, be gentle with yourself. And it's all about having fun. I've said that before. Like, he always asks me about having fun. He's more of like uh, a feeling. Like he's so like just zen, mellow. Like yes, and he's just like you know. Did you like the the? It's one thing to like go out there and like perform and have a match, but it's another thing to feel it and to go out there and feel the crowd and to just um, like know how you're feeling in that moment. And, like, most of the time, like, I come back and, like, Ricky Starks asks me, like, how do you feel? And I'm, like, I don't know. Like, I'm, like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how I feel. So now when I come back, like, I have a feeling. And it's, like, sometimes I have mm -hmm. to, like, get off of that high because I'm still in that that mode, that, like, aggression of a character. And I have to, like, give me a second. Give me, like, three minutes to, like, wind down and to, like, collect myself um, because I'm very emotional right now. And I'm still in that mode. So, like, give me a second. But um, I get a lot of advice, man. I get a lot, a lot of advice because a lot of people in our company want me to win. And they want me to be successful. And they do see me out there working my butt off and, and asking for advice. And because I'm new, I don't I don't know. I'm just, mm -hmm. some, I mean, like not new anymore, but like it's a lot of things that I haven't done before. So they just want to see me win because they know I've been thrown in the fire. So they're just like, hey, there's no way I could ever did that. There's no way I could ever. And they tell me that. And it makes me feel good because it's like, you know, like I'm doing it regardless of how people feel. Like I'm out here doing it. Like grow up, get off whatever you're doing and understand like this is the big, it's still the beginning. And like I'm elevating and I'm getting better. And the more reps I get and the, and, and the more experience I get, it's, it's only going to grow. I, de I definitely agree. And this is from the bottom of my heart. I love what you're doing. I love the fact that you just took the challenge and you're like, F y'all, I'm going to do it. And, you know, for even yeah, the who would honor. Turn this down? Who would, yeah. yeah, who would turn this down? Who in their right mind? Who? No one. No one. Nobody in their right mind would do something like that. And if they did, they would sit back years and years later and be like, damn, I was stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, like so. But then you handle that's it. I don't care. Grace. Yes. You you handle it with grace because a lot of people they think they they think they want it till they get it and then they realize all the pressure. Like I see the text message, like I see not the text messages, I see the tweets and all that stuff. And even when like I'm watching it towards other women, like I can't even look at it anymore. And it's not even about me. So it's just like for you to handle that with grace. And like you to like show up all the time, like I like I kid you not, like I really I appreciate that. That's inspirational beyond wrestling. So like keep doing what you're doing. Like I said, I can't I can't I can't say I, I'm gonna cheer for you, but you know I'm. Yes, I'm you split. are. That's what you're saying because you sound very <laughs> genuine, and it's cool. It's cool. I'm a. I, I am lovable. I attract beautiful women. I attract people with genuine spirits. That's just me. So it's cool. You can tell Taya, Tanya, whatever, 
that, you know, uh, I won you over and she can go left <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> There it is. Yeah, w or nothing happening this Sunday. It's going to be an amazing match. Can't can't wait to see the gear and all the things. Is there anything else that we have to look forward to for this weekend and beyond? <sighs> Just me dominating. Continue to grow that number getting up and up and up and up and people getting mad and upset mm -hmm. and uh, tired and sleepy and bored. I love it. That's what they're going to see. So keep it coming. And unless y'all favorites come down and want to see me and want to work with me and get that ass beat it's gonna be the same result grow up get over it <laughs> there it is it. <laughs> your champion miss jade cargill thank you so much it's wrestling talk the number one women's wrestling show on the planet Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet.